Hey man, look, we two weeks in the camp, pads a couple days. We seeing it hitting, we seeing the competition. I'm I'm fired up, brother. I, I know you are. You right down there in the middle of all of it. Oh, I'm I'm ready to pad up and, and run <laughs> through a wall. Uh, Joe Witt Jr. I know I tweeted it last week. Joe Witt Jr. Uh, was walking up behind me and he mis- uh, mistook, mistook me for one of his safeties. And we kind of had a little funny joke about it. And then yesterday, uh, I was kind of talking to DQ and and DQ was like, "Hey, man." You're looking like you can get out there. I was like, hey, one-day contract. Let me know. Let me know. <laughs> one-day contract, retire as a cowboy. Come talking. on. One-day contract. Start my career and end my NFL career as a cowboy. And yesterday in the uh, the one-on-one I had with Dak, like after the fact, uh, there was uh, there was something that was in front of me, and I had to, like, plant and move. And I didn't think about it. You know, you and I, former athletes, you just do it. And uh, I heard behind me, Dak was like, now that's the route. I was like, show me the ball then. <laughs> Put me in, <laughs> what, coach. What are we, what are we talking about? Yeah, throw me the ball, man. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Hey, hey you, you better relax, man. You might be you might pull something. Better stretch before you get that ball thrown to you, dog. Listen, you know how the NFL rules rules go. One day contracts. So if I'm on contract and I get injured, I'm on IR. You yeah, got to anyway. Get Come that on, check. <laughs> Come on, man. It's not me, my first rodeo. Let me, not let, checkers, baby. <laughs> let me pick it up from there, bro. With the injury report. Um. So, so we got a little bit of a, a nugget on Luke Schoolmaker possibly making his his return soon. You know, Izzy's, you know, Sam and you know, Simi are guys that are out there. Can you kind of give us an update on these dudes? Yeah. So, Simi is is dealing with something. I got to get confirmation on what it is exactly before we speak on it. But it's nothing major. Nothing major. He set out of the second padded practice, uh, and he did light work on rehab. Uh, so, I expect to see him back on the field today, if not today, certainly in the walkthrough tomorrow. Uh, no later than early next week. So I'm not concerned about Simi. I've seen him walking around. He looks fine. He's in great spirits. I'll keep you guys updated on that. Okay. Schoolmaker is making some uh, progress uh, with that plantar fasciitis. He's not had the boot on since uh, the day before the final day of mini camp, and he's also out here on the sidelines running kind of mental reps, doing some phantom drills. Uh, I posted a video of that uh, for you guys, ladies and gentlemen, on Twitter. Make sure you check that out. So Schoolmaker, uh, he could be making his – Camp debut here soon. I talked with Jordan Lewis uh, off the record quite a bit last week, and he just continues to reiterate to me that he is uh, actually slightly ahead of schedule, and he basically told me, hey, if we had a game today, I could play. So that's great news as far as where Jordan Lewis is and where he should be. Uh, But it also tells you that the Cowboys are being extremely cautious, rightfully so, the same way that they're being with Dorrance Armstrong, hamstring tightness, no major issue there. Um, Armstrong hasn't participated in padded practices just yet because he did report some tightness back there in the, or in the front of his hamstring. So they're working through that with Britt Brown and the rehab group. Sam Williams, I'm told it's a shoulder strain. I expect that he'll do uh, individual drills again today. After individual drills a couple of days ago, uh, he was evaluated, not cleared to fully practice, so he's still trying to work his way back. No shoulder brace or anything like that right now. So looks like you know he should not have a long-term issue uh Trayvon Diggs made his return to practice and boy did he ever make his mm. return to practice <laughs> um and of course the storyline there is the the jawing that he and Dak Prescott did but for those that were actually here uh the jawing aside which is it's a non-story for me because former athletes we've said much worse to each other it is not uh, especially my, my generation Pre, my generation, pre-political correctness, you wouldn't want to hear the things that I said to my teammates. But then afterwards, we were drinking, having fun, playing video games. So people who know know. People who don't know, Bro. they want to you know, make a big story out of it. Bro, we, we've, no deal, we've, we've said things about each other's moms. Like, like yeah. it, it, <laughs> that it, is it, nothing. Nobody, nobody, nobody was, was safe yeah. when you were trash-talking. Uh, basketball practice, football practice. Hell, when I was running track and field, man, we we do a long jump, turn around, and talk trash to the guy behind us. Like trash talking is a rite of passage, and it helps build the brotherhood. Because between and hell, uh, KD and I, somebody better go watch catch this fade. KD and I have gone at each other, yeah. and it's all in good love. That's how you figure out who you want to be in a trench with. Because if you can't go back and forth with me, how am I gonna? Uh, expect you to go back and forth and get into the mind of the opposition. So, like, no, I'm going to push you, and I want you to push me, and let's stick in each other's skin, and that's what it is. And I will also say this, for those that don't have access to practice and and see the things that I see and and our colleagues see and you see, Dak 
gives it as much as he takes it. Yeah, I was so, about to say. Uh, let, yeah, let, let's not, you know, that's not a Care Bear. <laughs> he, he's not out there doing the Care Bear stare. He he puts it on, and then they <laughs> give it back. But then when people people never see the first punch, they always see the second punch. You you right? so you brought it up on Twitter, bro. You said if y'all could if y'all could hear what J. Ron Curse says, if y'all could hear what Dak says, they don't know y'all. This would be a non-story, and it really is a non-story across the you know to to us. But you know, Cowboys clicks happens. Yeah. It, but then think about it, and, and then you got the people going out there for engagement and whatnot, and then you got the Eagles content creators camping out in bushes, at you know, <laughs> figuratively speaking. Um, but around the league, you got Josh Allen. He you know gets into a physical uh, pushing match with one of his uh, one of his linemen, and then you get uh, Travis Kelsey. He's taking actual swings on his teammate in in training camp. Go back to the previous generation, Cam Newton. Steve Smith, I mean, come on, right? So Josh at the end Norman. of the day, this is nothing. Josh Norman, this is nothing new under the sun. If you play competitive sports and you know this is what it looks like when the pads come on and the, the adrenaline starts going and the testosterone starts flying, but at the end of the day, Trayvon Diggs and Dak Prescott are still close friends. Trayvon Diggs' son, Aiden, still very much loves Dak Prescott. <laughs> it's all love. It's all fun and games. And then at the end of the day, they're still walking around this, this training camp after the fact, which is what the public doesn't see on Twitter. They're walking around high-fiving, you know. All, it's all the good stuff. It's a brotherhood. Yeah. So it's a non-issue. Those who know, know. Right. If you know, you know. Hey, Pat, before you came on here, I, I kind of just had this revelation, like, about the linebacker room and, and the whole, you know, LVE being down at defense and getting these reps, but I kind of just want to get a battle report update on the group in general, because we know LVE Clark are the, are the top two guys, but if something happens to one of them, we, we got to count on some of these young guys behind them. So can you give us an update on that room overall? Yeah, absolutely. I can tell you that Jonathan Hankins uh, looks like Jonathan Hankins uh, pre-injury. You know, you lost him for a couple games last season, but when he was on the field, he was really that definitive run stopper. He's doing the same thing out here in camp. Uh, Mozzie Smith, he needs to work on his get off a little bit, and he admitted that outright a couple days ago. Uh, I think he's learning that, as every NFL rookie would learn, right? Even though he's the first-round pick and he has all this strength, you got to keep in mind, he's going against Tyler Smith now. He's going against um, Tyron Smith now. He's going against Tyler Beatish now. So these are guys with NFL strength, not Big Ten strength. So Mozzie <laughs> Smith still number one freak, still a monster, but give him a moment to kind of, you know, get in there, bang around, and get his speed. I think he's going to be all right because I saw some flashes yesterday that made me raise an eyebrow like, there's Michigan Mozzie. Yeah. There he is. Um, Neville Gallimore, a lot of people kept asking me about Neville Gallimore, rightfully so, coming into this camp. Gallimore has made some plays on one in particular that I posted on Twitter, um, the play where Micah Parsons basically just obliterated both Tyron Smith and Michael Gallup, who was trying to chip. On that same play, that same video, look to the left, and you will see Neville Gallimore absolutely take Tyler Smith to school without a sack lunch. I mean, he just he led him all the way to the right, shed mm. him. They think, you know, Neville was in the backfield and Tyler Smith was on the ground looking up like, what happened? So if you're doing that to a guy like Tyler Smith and you're a guy who, I'm not going to say Gallimore is on the bubble, but you definitely need to prove yourself. Fantastic. Yeah, hot seat. I'll give you hot seat, absolutely. So Gallimore looks good. Quentin Bohanna, he's coming along, but I would like to see him come along a bit more considering um, the pressure that's now put on him with the addition of Mozzie Smith, with the addition of Jonathan Hankins last year via trade. So I'd like to see more from Cubo. Um, but someone else. Oh, Osa. Osa Digizua. It looks like he's found another gear, even coming off of a career season last year. So, yeah, Osa's look, looking like he's going to be a whole problem and a half this year. So keep an eye on that. And then as far as the edges go, Sam uh, got off to a, a little bit of a strong start, but now he's dealing with a shoulder injury. Um, and he did get uh, – he got a, got a lesson taught to himself <laughs> by one of the, the uh, offensive linemen. But, again, I don't anticipate that he's going to have a down season. I think he's going to have a breakout season. It's just lessons learned, you know, going into year two. And he's studying hard on the Michael Parsons, who's just – I tell you what, uh, the offensive line, they should probably form like a petition <laughs> for Micah Parsons to have a day off so they can actually try to run a play. Um, because between Micah and Tank, like how do you how do you run a play? Like I, 
people don't necessarily understand. They see the clips and they see us talking about Micah, but to see it in real time, and it's almost literally every other play. He's in the backfield. He's in the quarterback's face. He's already taking down the halfback, you know, almost nearly before the halfback gets the ball. He said last week, he said, I'm going to take him on an island I want in deep water. I want to see if they can swim, end quote. He is not getting around, folks. He is not. He is not. What, so I've heard Will McClay bring up Damone Clark. Uh, Brian was on yesterday. He brought up things about Damone Clark. We're hearing some some quality info on the year two linebacker out of LSU. Can you give us an update on, D, on, on Damone Clark? As well as Demo and Jabril Cox, these guys, these young linebackers that the Cowboys are going to be relying on this year. Yeah, and like I said in uh, in our previous chat, field, Jabril Cox, he's coming on extremely strong. He looks like LSU Jabril Cox. There's really no other way to play it, no other way to say it. Uh, and it's not that it's something that began here in camp. Started in OTAs, I saw it. I saw it in minicamp and reported on it in minicamp. So all of this is simply transferring over. So he's out there, he's making plays, he's making great reads, he's reacting. But for me, it's, ne- it's not necessarily the, the read that I'm looking for for Jabril Cox. I'm looking yeah. for that as well. But I'm looking for the reaction because he's coming off of that torn ACL last year, so now he has more time removed. I want to see if he trusts his knee. Last year it didn't look like he trusted that knee. This year he's not thinking about it. He's just playing football, and it shows. So Jabril Cox doing great. Uh, uh, Demo, DeMarvion Overshone, his, his eagerness to learn is what's going to carry him and, and shorten his learning curve here. And he is – Always in Dan Quinn's face, Joe Witt's face. He's always in Darian Thompson's face, the assistant linebacker's coach. Like he's in these guys' faces, always grilling them, asking them, what can I do, what can I do, what can I do differently, how can I be better. That's going to carry him a long way. Uh, deep, as far as Damone Clark, uh, oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't – let me just take a moment because this is just fantastic. Talk to, even, to him. Talk to e- him. Imagine. Um, Damone Clark, again, keep in mind, this is a guy who was coming off of spinal fusion surgery last year. He didn't enter the season until midway through. A lot of people thought it would be a red shirt year. Not only did he play after having spinal fusion surgery in March and having no off-season program, so no OTAs, no mini camp, no training camp, and he still was able to not only impact the game, he struggled a couple of times, which made sense considering everything I just said he missed because of his surgery, but he was also still able to impact the game and save the Cowboys at that position along with LVE because outside of that, when they lost Anthony Barr to injury, if not for Damone Clark, whew, where's that linebacker core last year? Now he has an entire offseason mm-hmm. of conditioning, strengthening, prep work, meetings with coaches, putting that on, in display on the field, and he looks every bit the part of a Pro Bowl linebacker as we have this conversation. Damone Clark is going to be nasty, mark my word. Give me hype, man. Look, I know you you pressed for That's time. That's why I had to pause. I had to pause <laughs> and take a breath. Yeah, because people don't know, but you go you gonna know. You're gonna know here soon. <laughs> Come on, man. Let's go. But before you get going, man, I, you have a one on one with Dak Prescott, and, and and shout out to KD yeah. who who basically you know was giving you flowers. Like this is a this is a major moment for you, brother. Like we all, well, not all, but a lot of us have been watching your growth, uh, and this is a big moment. But can you kind of give us a little teaser? About the one on one with Dak, uh, that I guess would be what is it airing or is it is it dropping or or, or I'm not sure. Well, it's, 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 it's on the website. It's on yeah. the dot com. It's also on YouTube, and I also just dropped a teaser clip on Twitter five minutes before you and I went live. Gotcha. And there's the link to the full video with and it's uh, embedded in an article. So I wrote around it so you kind of get a twofer there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm giving you a twofer, no paywall, free of charge. Go get some. Um, But my goal with sitting down with Dak Prescott was basically I wanted him to open up his mindset and explain it to the fans. So it's not uh, as much me grilling him as much as it is me positioning him with questions that force him to think and give fans the actual, as he rides by me on the bike throwing up the deuce right now, as he (laughs) uh, to give fans insight into not only what Dak Prescott sees is the single biggest thing that would keep the Cowboys from reaching the Super Bowl this year and how to overcome that. Um, but also, you know, what do they look to build on from the quarterback standpoint? What is he seeing? What would he like to see? So, I mean, it really just gives everybody some, some real deep insight into the psyche of the franchise quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. 
So check that out again. It's on YouTube. Uh, it's on the DallasCowboys.com website. And if you go to my Twitter, at Voice at the Star right now, you'll see the full link and the teaser video. So, yeah, go get some. Yes, yeah, science. Science, baby. Hey, Pat, appreciate you doing all the hard work down there and then obviously joining us every week, giving us updates on the Cowboys training camp. It's Pat Nosey Walker, DallasCowboys.com. Thanks for watching and make sure to follow and subscribe to A to Z Dallas so you don't miss an episode of The Scientific Method. Every Thursday morning, 9 a.m. Central on Facebook and YouTube with every episode available on A to Z Sports.com.